Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on largest positive integer that exists with its negative. It's a pretty easy problem, so in this one you have an array that doesn't contain zeros and you want to find the largest possible integer k such that negative k also exists. So here um, it's going to be 3. Here there's two numbers, 7 and 1, so you return 7. And here there's none. And so we'll talk about two ways you can do it and we'll code them up and then some um, optimizations you can think of just like things that are actually going to be useful is like for you know harder problems things you want to start thinking about so one way to do it um is pretty simple to figure out i think it's like the more intuitive one and it's using a set so what we can do is we can just go through every number check if it's negative isn't in the set and so this is a nice little optimization so instead of writing like if number is negative do something if number is positive do something instead what we can do is we can just go through every number and just check is negative number in our set that way if it's like negative one we'll check for one if it's one we'll check for negative one so it'll handle both so a little trick there and then basically for every time that is the case we will just maximize our result for that number so what that's going to look like is like, let's say we go through this example. So we'll start here. I can't really move it in here, but what is, I guess I'll just do it this way. So we'll check is one in our set. No, it's not. So we'll put negative one in our set is negative 10 in our set. No, it's not. So we'll put 10 in our set is six in our set. Nope. These, these both are not. So we'll put those this in our set. And then once we hit here, we'll check is seven in our set and seven is in our set. So then we will set our result to seven. And we're not going to set our result to seven. We're going to set our result to the maximal value of like the previous result and our current value of uh, the absolute value of our current value. And then for, um, and then we'll put, um, actually, so, so we don't need to put the other, like once, once, uh, like if we check for seven and seven is in our set, then we kind of already took care of this. So we don't need to put this in the set. So we don't need to put this in the set. Then for one, we'll check is negative one in our set. Yes, it is. So we'll maximize the result to be seven and one and we'll return seven. Um, so that's one way to do it. And you can set your result to negative one to start off to make sure that if you didn't find anything, you just return that. So it gives you some pretty clean code. Um, the other solution is a little bit less intuitive, but it's kind of the same thing as like doing, if you did like two sum, um, it's kind of the same thing. And that's a two pointer. So basically what you can do is you can sort your array. So let's look at this example again. Um, so if we sort our array, our numbers will be here. Let's see, negative seven, um, negative one, one, six, seven, ten, I think. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. All right. And we don't need any of these. And basically, um, so your array is going to be sorted from the most negative to the most positive number. And in order to have a valid result, you need to have a negative number and a positive number, right? You need to have both. So what you can do is you can make two pointers like this. Um, and then you just check. Okay. So your condition for doing this loop is as long as your right pointer is positive or you can, you can do this in a few ways, but you can say like, as long as my right pointer is positive and my um, right pointer is greater than my left pointer, right? You have to have two unique numbers and the right number has to be positive because if this whole thing was negative, there would be nothing here. So you could say that you could say like, if that's the case, just keep doing this. Um, and then basically you just check like, is this value multiplied by negative one equal to this? If it is, so notice also with a two pointer, you're going to have the, um, the biggest negative number and the biggest positive number are the numbers you're starting with. So with a two pointer, as soon as you find a result, you're done because once you find a result, the first result you're going to find is going to be the biggest. So that's kind of the uh, nice thing about that is yes, you do sort, but then when you actually go through your array, the f you don't have to keep track of like, what's the biggest number I found. It's going to be the first one. So you basically check like which one of these is bigger, the absolute value. And so the absolute value or they're equal. So in this case, 10 is bigger, which means I need a smaller positive number to try to match my seven. Like I know negative 10 isn't in here because I would have already hit it. Right. Cause negative 10 would, if it was in here, it would have been over here. So I know for sure that, um, 10 isn't negative 10 isn't in here, but seven might be. And so you move this here and you find it. And let's say seven isn't, let's say this is like eight. So let's just keep going with this example. So if seven wasn't here, you would just do this or you would return seven, but let's say we go here. So now, um, once again, we know that 
negative eight isn't in here because it would have been here. We would have already hit it. So whatever the bigger one is, you move it towards the middle. So this is bigger, you move it towards the middle. Now we know for sure that seven isn't in here because if seven was in here, it would have been past the six. So then we're gonna wanna move this one. And then we check which one's bigger, absolute value. And we know for sure negative six isn't in here because we got to negative one without getting to negative six. So we know for sure this isn't in here. So we'll move this one in. And now they're the same, so you return that. And then if you were to go through an array where um, nothing is the same, like let's say this was two, then what would happen here is you would just move this over here and then you'd be done, you wouldn't find anything and then you could just return negative one as a default. So those are kind of the two ways you can do it um, and we can code with those pretty simple, pretty fast. So let's do the set one first. So we'll say like um, set integer called cache or something. And we're gonna make a result and we're gonna make it negative one and we're gonna try to maximize it. Then we can go through all our numbers. So we can say for in num in nums, if negative num or if cache contains negative num, that means we have the pair, right? So if this is negative, that means the positive is in here. If it's positive, we have the negative in here. So this is true, we can try to maximize the result and we don't need to store both in the cache because we already processed this number. So like if we have seven in the cache and we hit negative seven, we don't really need to put negative seven in the cache already because we would have already processed seven and negative seven. We don't need to do it multiple times. So yeah, so um, in this case, we'll just say result equals max uh, of result and so this number and negative number, like these can be, you don't know which one's positive, so you can just absolute value one of them. So we can just do this. So maximize whichever one we have. And then and then if the cache doesn't have it, then we need to put it in. So we can say cache.add. And finally, then we just return result. If we never found anything, then we would just return negative one as a default. So that would work out. So that's one way and it's pretty good. And let's comment this out now, or let's just cut it and put it down here or something, comment it out. Okay. Um, and so the other way is the sort. So you can do sort. You have two pointers. So int left equals zero, int right equals nums length minus one. And then while left is less than right and like I said, there's a couple of conditions you can check here, but this one works. So essentially your right number has to be positive because you need a positive and a negative. Like if the whole array is negative, it's never gonna work. And if the whole array is positive, it's never gonna work. So like this, then we just check if um, negative nums left equals nums right. Then, the, like I said, because we're checking the biggest and smallest value um, together, the first, the first one of these that's true, that's always going to be the result. So we can just return here. Um, otherwise, we can just check which one's bigger. So if um, negative nums left is bigger than nums right, then we need to move our left in. And if nums right is bigger, then we need to move our right to the left. So. And if we went through this whole loop and didn't find anything, once again, same kind of thing, just return negative one. And let's try that. And that works as well. So as far as runtime and all that, um, so I guess the solution is going to be um, with a sort, it's gonna be n log n. And then this thing is um, linear time because you have two pointer and you just move them in towards, you always move one pointer in or you have a result. So that's linear time, this is O of one space. And then the solution down here is, um, con or it's a uh, linear time. So this one was logarithmic. This one was um, linear because you're just going through the numbers one time, but this space is O of n. So it's kind of like a trade off of, um, kind of same like I said to some, either using a cache or sort, either one works. Yeah, so these two main ways are the main ways to do it, and you should definitely be um, you should definitely be able to do it both. So if this is like, you know, one of your first leak code problems, I definitely recommend doing both. Um, and then look for these patterns in future problems. You'll basically just get harder problems with these patterns repeated. Um, yeah, and hopefully that was helpful. If it was, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.